Uh, all right. <laughs> Quite interesting. Good morning. Welcome. Good to see. Happy New Year, everybody. Good to see you all. Donet, I hear you as legal counsel for Trump. That's true. Hell no. <laughs> That's what they say. Not at all. But, but they lying on you. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't support insurrections and those kinds of activities in a democracy. Absolutely not. Insurrections, period. But uh, I mean, it's the number one democracy in the world, right? So Isn't that something? you what really don't want to set that precedent. The number one democracy in the world after this presidency is over. But you know, my only disappointment with that and what happened yesterday, um, I mean, it may be a bit petty, but I think I would have, you know, if I had the authority on behalf of government to send a nice notice. Um, flagging all the human citizens to be careful whenever they move around in the U.S. because of the violence. The Jamaican government should have sent out a similar advisory. The Haitian government should have sent out a similar every single country who they intend to, you know, rag on because we are having our own different instabilities. Everyone mm -hmm. should have sent out a notice. Yeah. Let them know the world is watching you now. Well, they knew that because they, they, they basically announced that every, every opportunity they got yesterday, it was announced. The world is watching. Furthermore, no, no, no. they, they, they got, they for the got record, calls from, from several no, country no. leaders. Um, um, no, no, no. Issue the official, issue know, the official advisory and put it on the, put it on the record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't worry. Mm -hmm. These fellas scared, man. You're, you know, they're scared of retribution and <laughs> so they, 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 yes. the, tour, the tourist done ain't coming. Don't forget yeah. that. <laughs> that was retaliated a couple weeks ago, you know. Mm. But we keep saying the America is number one world number one democracy. Yeah, but America they, they, made a they made a terrible mistake when they they elected that man to be president. True, true. But, the, but their system isn't as democratic, say, even as some of the older European countries, for example. Definitely not. Uh, you have mm -hmm. a lot of vote, voter suppression. You have a lot of gerrymandering mm -hmm. of, the, of the districts, especially with blacks and, and people of color. You, mm -hmm. that, that, that number one. I know number one democracy as far as I, I am concerned when you can when you consider that uh, see many people have more fear left than, than they do because when, you know when, when you consider the gerrymandering official and the Republicans are being do, doing that for, for years and years decades. yes that that is quite correct. They, they are still misreading their Indian population. Yeah. Like they don't have any rights. Mm -hmm. Morning, Leon. <clears throat> Seven o'clock, but we only have 21 persons online. So I will wait for another five minutes. Morning, morning everyone. Morning, Madam President. Uh, morning. Morning, Gani. Morning, P.P. Leroy. Morning. Couple others. I finish. Morning, <laughs> Karen. 
Morning, morning. Ma Madam Secretary, are you able to tell all who came in after seven o'clock? Um, no, not right. I mean, I wasn't paying attention from seven. I could, but that's a lot of work for the P. Oh, okay. I make you when you're on a phone. I'm trying to think... record everybody who comes into the meeting, but I'm not doing the timing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm only doing I, it I for think, the register. I think Father P trying to pick on people, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, since I'm you, not since going you to be mentioned it, stealing on anybody. You know, you you made it. You made it in. If <laughs> they're late, they will they will be honest and admit. <laughs> no, Dino ain't make it in, man. Dino, your mouth so hard. You trying to impute ill ill will to me? Father huh? P, I wasn't talking to you. You know, I was talking to Donat them. I know, but I'm talking to you. <laughs> Morning, Delisa. I'm recording guests and so on, so I can be ready to admit to and admitting members to the meeting. Good morning. And some are guests. I don't think you can find there. Good morning, Madam Secretary. Our guest just joined in. <laughs> you our mean our speaker? speaker? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, he has been here for a minute. I just made him co-host because I'm not okay, sure if he has a PowerPoint presentation. He okay, identified himself to me, so. Morning, Callan Beach. Welcome to our meeting this morning. Hi, good morning. How good are morning. You? Good morning, great. And thank you so very much for having me. You're oh, quite oh, welcome. Great. Good. Glad to have you. Morning, morning. Hey, good morning. How are you doing, Dino? You know? <laughs> right here, man. It's good to see you again, sir. Same here, <laughs> man. Always a pleasure. So you ain't, you ain't glad to see me? <laughs> 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 I'm not going to say anything. That may be a fine. <laughs> you, know, you know it could be a fine. <laughs> you know you're being cautious this year. <laughs> 2021, more cautious. <laughs> if, if you see what's happening in the U.S., you got to be cautious everywhere. But... <laughs> but yes. We cannot miss that, eh? <laughs> no. Okay. It's five minutes after seven. And I'll call this meeting to order. Happy New Year and good morning to everyone. Welcome to our first meeting for the year 2021 and vocational month. Our invocation will be done by Rotarian Melanie. Good morning. Let us pray. Creator and sustainer of all that is or will ever be, accept our thanks for this day and all its blessings. We ask that you guide and direct our club, its leaders, and our actions. Grant that each of us may feel our responsibility to Rotary, to our community, and to our country. Bless our fellowship today in your service. Amen. 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 Loyal toast, Rotarian Barrett. To the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. To the Commonwealth, Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Visiting Rotarians. Okay, thank Second. you, Madam President. I would like to first of all say Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to another Sunrise meeting. We have a number of Rotarians visiting with us this morning. I will start with um, Rotarian Calnon. We, I think you're in Rotary Club of East Nassau. Southeast Nassau, good morning. Southeast Nassau, welcome to the meeting, sir. Well, good morning and happy new year and thank you very much for having me. Okay. I am also seeing Rotarian Deliso. Welcome, Rotarian Deliso. Past president. Um, PP Deliso. I know I'm supposed to remember those names, but <laughs> it is difficult because I don't know them personally. So um, could you just put in the chat your titles so I can know and make sure that I'll introduce you properly. Um, and I think that's it for visiting Rotarians. We have a few guests this morning and I'll start with PP Leroy's guest. So she was the first 
um, to be in on this meeting. Why don't we allow our Rotarians to introduce their guests? That's what I just did. I said I'd like P.P. Leroy to introduce his guest. P.P. Leroy? <laughs> you have to unmute your mic if you're muted. P.P. Leroy. <laughs> I know I saw him on the line. I'm yes, not sure he why he's not um, unmuting. Good but, morning, good morning. I'm here. I was trying to unmute my mic. Okay, <laughs> please go ahead and introduce your guest. Thank you. Okay, my guest this morning is I think it's Marvel Mint. It is. Yeah. It is the um, um, Marvel. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I think it's better for you to do the introduction than me. But it's a pleasure <laughs> to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Marva Russell Mins, and I am the mother of one of your guest speakers, Lars Mins. Hmm. Okay. And I'm happy to be here this morning. Awesome. <laughs> and I, we are going to introduce uh, Mr. Mins shortly, but I just want to also extend a warm welcome to him, and we look forward to hearing from him. Um, are there any other visitors of Rotarians? Guests of Rotarians? Morning and happy new year, fellow Rotarians and guests. I'd like to introduce my guest, a fellow educator, former teacher of the year for the public schools in the Bahamas, Nadia Smith. Thanks for joining us, Nadia. Thank you. Welcome, Nadia. Welcome. And I think that is it. Uh, uh, there's also my guest, Felicia Carey, who's also here this morning as well. Oh, yeah, Felicia Carey is. Carey. Welcome, Felicia. Good morning. Happy New Year to all. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Pleasure to have you. All right. I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. So if I am, please open your mic. Um, and just to say the raffle for today is a, um, a bar set. It's an opener and um, wine glasses to add to your um, your bars for the new year. <laughs> the tickets are one for five and three for ten dollars. So please enter your order in the chat and I'll make note of it and prepare the raffle. Thank you and with that said welcome everyone and back to you President Francis. Thank you Secretary Donet. and now we'll have uh, Sergeant Rams. The floor is yours. Morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Morning again. Morning. Okay, let me let you all see my not too handsome face. <laughs> what you laughing at, Francis? Somebody, as old people say, somebody give you a joke? <laughs> anyway, isn't it good to be alive? Isn't it good to be here? We've seen another year. And we thank God anyway. Difficult as it is, none of us opted out, right? Um, and as always, of course, better to be seen than viewed. At least we are not being viewed. And so many of our acquaintances have, have been viewed. But in all things, we give thanks. All those, this is a new year, and all of us who have made it, let's put in a happy Two dollars. Anybody want to say why he or she is happy? Let us know. What what is it? Tell us, Dino, why are you happy? Felix, why are you happy? Leon, why are you happy? Uh, Melanie, why are you happy? Barrett, why are you happy? Let, let us engage. Let us reflect on why we are happy. Because you you gonna get charged anyway, so you might as well. Every, I can get charged get anyway. Charged. If I can get Every charged anyway, Father P, I, I'm happy that you called my name Foist. So I don't know why you called my name Foist, but, but I'm happy you called my name Foist. Okay. That's, that's, that's $5. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Anybody else want to say what? Melanie, I'll key this. Why are you happy? Well, brother, I'm happy you thought to call my name too. I'm $5 then, $5. Okay, good, no problem. 
you on it. You got you got paid to be on it. You know that. Yeah. We didn't yeah. We, we didn't make the we wouldn't we didn't make the Queen's list of honors for New Year's, but at least we we thank God anyway. We are all honored. We all honorable. Okay. Well, you know the gift of life is an honor. The start Praise of the Lord. Life, so we have to mm -hmm. give thanks that we're here. Any all people without their pins. Now, how, how do we know that? This is an honor thing. People will type in and say, I didn't have on my pin, Madam Secretary. So that's how it works because it's hard to find people when we can't see them. How does that work? By on their um, four -way, on the four way test. <laughs> well, Father Pippi, can you, can you, you yeah, rely on the four-way test? Is it the truth? If you're not wearing your pin, then you need to put in the chat, I'm not wearing my mm -hmm. pin. And um, Treasurer Magdal will make note of it. Well, Father P, I'm curious, can you demonstrate for us how we would know if someone has their pin on, please? Uh, Good no, one, I, Kim. No, I, I can't demonstrate. Yeah, mouth hard, Kim. You, you I just asked you. Listen, I cold, I sweat, so I know I can get fined. So I might as well go all out. <laughs> yeah, man, de definitely. You, you know you're going to get fined, so give me $3 for life and everything else. So it's three and I will include you for your six, father. <laughs> you, you, you ain't married yet. You married uh, yet? No, I, I, I'll uh, put in my uh, three when you put in your uh, six and you're not wearing none and uh, you're fighting me too. All right, I'll, I'll put in. I'll, I'll <laughs> double whatever you put in. Zagan <laughs> Wowdy. Ba Barry Smith. Yes. Yeah. Good to see you. I'm, I haven't seen you in church, but it's good to see you anyway. Good to see you in the meeting. Hope to see you in church on Sunday. I'm preaching on Sunday, so please be there. If not, that's an extra fine. <laughs> right, Francis? We already you have four persons who have admitted that they do not have their pens on. Okay. All right. Is it the truth? Okay. Well, I want to see some other names popping up, popping up. No pin, no pin. And that's just how... That's how it gets registered. Okay, you got to be able to get these things together. You know, you know I, a few weeks ago, Ted Sweeten, mortician, died, but his wife had died a few weeks before that. And so I guess for the children, that's particularly tragic. Both parents are gone. It looks like sometimes the, the, the wife comes back for the man. I didn't tell my wife, if she dies first, she ain't gonna come back, I gonna be all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dino, did you tell me the one with the man who was with, at his wife's deathbed and she's saying, honey, I'm going to die, I, but I know you are going to, you might remarry and, I, and that, is, that is fine. Uh, <laughs> do you, are, you, are you going to let my, your new wife uh, come and live in the house? He said, yeah, because it doesn't make sense renting another house. She said, yeah, that's true. That's true. You could let her come. Say, what about driving my car? She, he said, mm, yeah, I, I will let her do that because, you know, after all, she, you know, you should buy another car and you have the car right here. She said, what about, what about my golf clubs? He said, oh, no, no, no. She's left-handed. Uh, you, <laughs> you, I don't know if they got that. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, I didn't get that got, one, Father. She, you don't get that the one. New, the new wife is picked out already. The old wife ain't dead yet. The new wife didn't pick out. Okay, my, but my seriously, my wife went to the doctor. <laughs> my wife went to the doctor yesterday, and so when she came home, quite naturally, I asked her what the doctor said. The same doctor said she's all right and blah blah blah. Reminds me of the fellow who went to the doctor and he went into the doctor and then the doctor told him to go out and told his wife to come in because he wanted to say something to the wife. So he, the wife went in and she was told by the doctor saying, your husband is very, very ill, but if you do some things, there's some things you have to do. If you do them, he will live. Your husband will live. And all you need to do is when he wakes up in the morning, give him breakfast, have his breakfast ready. If he goes to work, you don't have to call him to find out where he is. Whenever he comes back home, you don't complain and you just have his food ready. On, on, on payday, you don't have to worry about any money. Don't harass the man about anything. You just pick up the children. You do 
everything and just give the man a break, give him a free ride. So the man came, the woman came out and they were driving on the highway. So remembering that that doctor said, if you do all these things, your husband will live. So he said, honey, honey, what did the doctor say? The doctor say, you're going to die. Thank you. God bless you all. <laughs> Have a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Father P. Bye-bye. <laughs> Past President Diana, maybe have birthdays, please. A very pleasant good morning to one and all. Pastor P, I think the, the lady said it's something like that. You is going to die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you is going to die. My I, was the, I was the die. <laughs> um, you, we, have, we, have, oh. we have two celebrants on the fourth of the, of the month. Um, Jerice, pretty girl Jerice. And we also have our very own Miss Marsha, Miss Marsha in the house. So happy birthday to the both of you. May you live long and enjoy a healthy, prosperous life. Thank you. Thank you, past president Diana. Happy birthday, ladies. Now we'll have our announcements. Director Barish. Good morning, sunrise and guests. Welcome to Vocational Services Month. The Vocational Services Committee is happy to bring to you a continuation of board members giving a brief share of their roles and responsibilities. This month, we also have a few speakers. They are Bahamians living abroad who have excelled in their respective fields and will share their career journey. We'll also have a presentation regarding vocational trends here in the Bahamas. And lastly, we'll have a fun activity so stay tuned and enjoy. Thank you, Director Barrett. Are there any other announcements, directors? <clears throat> Fellow Rotarians, our Rotorax is having a lip and fit we, uh, two weeks. January 1st to the 15th, it's a virtual fun run walk. I would like for us to please register to support them. The information is already in the chat. Uh, the link is there for you to register and let us support our role actors. <clears throat> I now invite Director Janelle to give us a five minute talk on vocational services, presentation and literacy. Is Janelle with us this morning? I have not seen her. <clears throat> Director Barrett. We can go on to the introduction of the speaker. Okay, thank you. Now we'll have an introduction of our speaker. Rotarian Jamie. Our speaker speaks this morning on career journey, lessons and challenges. Mr. Laz N. Mins. Please introduce our guest speaker, Rotarian Jamie. Good morning, fellow Rotarians. Lars Mans is currently the head of HR for Mercedes-Benz USA with the responsibility for the US and Canada. He joined the company in March, 2015. Lars currently leads the organization in designing, implementing and executing HR strategies that directly align with the company's strategic objectives, specifically in sales, marketing, and distribution of passenger cars in the United States, Mexico, Canada. Lars and his team has played a pivotal role in successful onboarding of 300 plus new employees since his arrival. It's the largest one year hiring for the company has ever experienced in its 50 plus year history. He and his team are now poised to lead one of the world's most admired brands through a large scale transformation. Prior to joining Mercedes-Benz USA, 
Lars served as the senior manager of talent acquisition for the Home Depot at Home Services, commonly referred to as Do It For Me Business. Lars spent 10 years with the Home Depot and served in roles of increasingly responsibility, most notably serving as a senior manager of talent management for operations, services, finance, and IT. He led all facets of talent management and supported those business areas in several large scale transformational efforts aimed at increasing overly operation efficiencies. He is the current chair of the Society of HR Management in Atlanta, a member of Leadership Atlanta class of 2021 and a board of trustee for Mount Vernon Presbyterian School. Lars is, sought after, is a sought after presenter and facilitator and spends considerable time communicating the importance of cultivating the right talent for business success. He earned a bachelor's degree in the business management from Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. A proud native of Nassau, Bahamas, he is married to Moya Menz, the owner of MM Inc. Studio, and they reside in Sandy Springs, Georgia, with their three beautiful children, Landon, Latham, and Leanne. Without further ado, let us all please welcome Mr. Lars Menz. Lars? Good morning, and thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I wish everyone a happy new year. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, say good morning to my mother. I don't think we've ever really said good morning this early uh, since she's now retired and I, I don't have the luxury of uh, waking her up any longer. Uh, but I want to wish my, my mom a uh, good morning and I'll certainly come back there in a second. Certainly want to uh, wish a good morning to Barrett Miller. Uh, Barrett and I go way back. Uh, <laughs> I say way back, um, our days at, uh, at SAC, and then uh, little did I know, uh, uh, Bard was actually in Virginia. So when I landed at Hampton, I landed uh, very softly. Uh, and then uh, to Mr. Leroy Archer, who I'll, come, I'll say a bit more uh, later on, I want to wish him a very special uh, good morning. Uh, he and his wife played a very pivotal role in my life and, and uh, developing uh, my career. And again, I'll, I'll share more about that. But I want to say good morning to all of you. Uh, it is Truly my honor uh, and, and privilege. Uh, I like early mornings. Um, considering that I work for a German company, they're up, or they've been up for six hours now. Uh, so this is, this is quite, uh, quite fitting. And uh, to have this much energy uh, speaks volumes of your, uh, of your club. Uh, so welcome, uh, oh, sorry, uh, thank you for having me to, uh, to all of you. I have uh, some slides to share. So if you don't mind, I will, uh, I will do so if I'm able. Uh, Madam Host, if you don't mind uh, allowing me to share my screen, please. And I'm not the uh, most technologically astute, but I will I'll do my best. So hopefully I don't, uh, I don't ruin the proceedings because this is quite parliamentarian, uh, which takes me back to my Toastmasters days. Yes, you can go ahead. All right, very good. Thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, greetings to all of you uh, <clears throat> from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm just north of Atlanta in a place called Sandy Springs. And on screen, you're looking at our uh, beautiful headquarters, which we built back in 2018. Um, I always like to ask the question, uh, can anyone guess, was this uh, dusk or dawn? So I'll just uh, allow some, uh, some uh, viewer participation here and, and uh, see if anyone can guess when this photo was taken. Let me, let me say whatever the answer is. Okay, whatever the answer is, it, it's a good answer because I'm not sure myself. Uh, I often say to my team, I think just looking at, I mean, this very well could be, it could be dusk. Um, looking at it, um, uh, the guys were clever enough to take this uh, with a drone and then they eliminated the, uh, the sky. So you can't really tell which, which way the, uh, the sun is facing. So uh, just a little, uh, little uh, viewer participation. But let me just, uh, again, uh, kind of get back on track. Uh, I bring you greetings from, uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, the home of Mercedes-Benz USA. I have responsibilities, um, uh, as the young lady mentioned in the bio, uh, for, for Canada. I used to have responsibilities for, uh, for Mexico. Um, my boss was kind enough to uh, relinquish that. I, I do not need a third country. Um, I've been with the company since uh, 2015. Um, we've been on a roller coaster, to say the least, and I'll talk a little more about what 2020 has really meant. Uh, but since 2015, had increasing our responsibilities, and now have the, uh, the pleasure and the honor of leading this organization uh, from an HR uh, standpoint. I always like to point out that Mercedes-Benz USA 
uh, is involved in the sales, marketing, and distribution. And that's an important point uh, because there are three facets of the car business. You design the car. So it's the architectural uh, makeup, the uh, physical architecture, now the software architecture. Uh, we're not involved in that business. Then there's also the manufacturing. Uh, that is also not our business. We are solely responsible for the vehicle once it's fully finished and we, uh, we take ownership of it and then we sell it or resell it rather to our, uh, to our dealers. Uh, so our dealers are independent um, uh, franchise, uh, franchisees of ours and we control the wholesale uh, portion of it. So it's a distinction uh, that I always like to point out. Um, so it, it, makes, uh, it makes for a cleaner, a cleaner process as far as uh, we're concerned. We're about 2,000 employees, uh, 2,500 employees, if you count our flagship dealership, which we do own in, in Manhattan, New York, uh, 2,000 in the U.S., another 2,500 in Canada, so uh, just a little shy of 5,000 uh, employees, and they uh, across uh, many facets of our business, HR, finance, accounting, uh, sales and marketing, et cetera. Um, we are, we are uh, responsible in some small way for uh, the recently built Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the Atlanta Falcons and the Atlanta United soccer team, uh, but no direct uh, affiliation. We just have the uh, naming rights and, and we uh, manage that relationship. So a little, bit, a little bit about me. I'll start with the left and then I'll end uh, in the middle. Um, start with the left, move to the right and end in the middle. Uh, I attended uh, St. Augustine's College. I'm, I'm proud to, uh, to say I'm a true soccer. As I said earlier, that's where Barrett and I uh, met each other uh, initially. Um, and then after I graduated from SAC in 1992, I went on to the College of the Bahamas. And that was probably the best thing that happened for me. As much as I thought I might've been ready to go abroad, I was not. Um, and, and so my mother had the, uh, the, uh, the wisdom, um, and she still uh, has today, uh, to, uh, to decide uh, my fate and send me to uh, COB. Uh, and then after COB, I went on to, uh, to Hampton uh, University. Uh, off to the right, as, a, as a bio, um, the young lady mentioned in my bio, I spent 10 years at the Home Depot. That was a very pivotal time in my career. Uh, Home Depot, as all of you know, is uh, the world's largest home improvement company, but less about the large improvement company, much more about their ability to scale a business and move very rapidly. Once they put their mind to something, they go very fast. And so, of course, as you can imagine, for anyone looking to develop their career, that becomes um, very significant in your overall uh, development. And then, as I mentioned, in 2015, I had the, uh, the benefit of uh, moving to, uh, to Mercedes. In, in the middle, uh, very much my reason why I exist. And uh, this is my lovely wife that you see in the center, Moya uh, Mins, uh, Nay Adams. Um, I remind, she's a St. John's uh, giant. I remind every day I, 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 was, I was glad to marry a giant because it tells me how great SAC is. Uh, every day, I'm just, just joking. Uh, and she, uh, she and I have raised uh, three wonderful kids. Uh, Landon off to the left, who's 15 now. Uh, Latham just under my, uh, off to my right in the, uh, the photo, who's 13. And then Leon, who's, uh, who's 11. This is a recent photo of us down at the, uh, down at the bottom, very recent. They don't know this is in the, uh, in the photo. We were all in our pajamas, so I snuck this one in. So please discard this. Please don't take any screenshots of this, uh, lest I be, uh, you know, uh, crucified uh, after this uh, presentation. But they've been uh, just uh, fantastic for me in, in my overall leadership journey and my career journey. And uh, a, a, a fatherhood and, and, uh, and being a husband is something I take uh, very, uh, very significantly. So for the balance of uh, my presentation today, I, talk, I wanna talk about three things. And in true Toastmasters fashion, um, this helps to, uh, to gird the overall uh, discussion. The first of which is the three principles that I live by. And I, I feel uh, very strongly about these. These are non-negotiables uh, for me. In addition, three moments that have mattered for me in my career my overall life journey. And then lastly, three lessons from COVID-19. As much as we all uh, desire to get out of 2019, I'm sorry, 2020, I will tell you that 2020 uh, was an important year. And I think quite honestly, it's a gift from God. I think if we're really paying attention to some of the things that COVID provided us outside of the infection rates and the, uh, the plight that it put on our society, it also required us to be still. And in being still is where you find the, the essence of really what you're about. Uh, and again, I'll talk more about that uh, in just a second. Let me start, start off by talking a little bit about three principles. And uh, Father Palacios mentioned it earlier as we were tuning up and getting ready that, uh, you know, he was beyond his career. I like to think that your career is nothing more than an outcome of the principles you live by, those virtues that you live by. 
So while I will talk a little bit about career, I, I, I care to talk much more about uh, the principles that I live by because these things will always lead to an enrichment in your career and whatever field or capacity you find yourself in. The first is service is the path to greatness. Uh, the late Jim Rohn mentioned that uh, service to many leads to greatness and I believe this. And I, I will tell you that my life has been fashioned because of what I saw my mother do um, with, with serving the, uh, the folks around her and in some, of the, in some respects, those who are, who are least fortunate. Something that I've, I've tried to, uh, to live by uh, some of my civic involvement uh, and, and some of the giving back opportunities that I, that I um, uh, embark on has a lot to do with this. I don't seek for greatness, but I recognize if there's ever a desire to get to greatness, it truly is, is by, uh, by way of service to, uh, to many people. The second point is be a lifelong learner and invest more in yourself than you do your job. I remember telling a former boss of mine that I will invest more in myself than I do my job. And he laughed at me. He said, you, you may have that a little backwards. And to this day, I, I, I stand firmly on that. The investment in yourself always ensures that you show up a better employee, always, ensure, always ensures that you show up a better business owner, a better service provider, a better uh, you know, priest, a better whatever it is that you, you're involved in. The, uh, the investment in yourself and being a lifelong, li lifelong learner is at the essence. And then thirdly, never forget where you come from and never forget how or who got you here. And I would just pause and say that uh, Mr. Leroy Archer <clears throat> gave me an opportunity at Commonwealth Brewery. And I don't know if you remember this, but the part of the story, and I'll say a bit more about this, about, uh, about my educational journey. It took me six years to get my bachelor's degree. Uh, and I, again, I'll, I'll be very pointed when I talk a bit more. Uh, I spent about three years at uh, COB uh, through no fault of mine, uh, some of which was the, the, the timing of certain classes. So it took three years to complete my associate's degree. But he gave me an opportunity to see what a manufacturing business is all about. And at the time, Commonwealth Brewery was, was everything um, uh, in, in terms of what I thought business was all about. It showed me end-to-end -end what an operation looked like, start times, end times, discipline. Um, and, and to see that operation at the, the bottom level, because I was only, you know, didn't have any experience or skills at the time. So I was the, the guy that pulled the recycle bottles out and put them on the line. But I was able to look at that operation and say, wow, I mean, this is really how you scale a business. And while with, I had naked eyes at the time, that was setting me up for a future opportunity at the Home Depot where I supported their supply chain. So I often went back to that experience and I have, I have Mr. Uh, Mr. Archer uh, to thank. I'd also um, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, say a bit about his wife. Back in the seventh grade, I did an assessment uh, through Ms., uh, Mrs. Joy on Archer, where she um, had me take a career assessment. And, and that career assessment told me that I should work with others um, in some way. And at the time I thought, well, maybe that's psychology. Little did I know it was the assessment that was preparing me for a, uh, a career in, uh, in HR. Uh, and and I, I, have, I have the two of them to thank. So I never forget where, where I, I come from and never forget who and how I, how I got there. The other three uh, things that uh, I talked about earlier, three, three moments that mattered in my life. Uh, and I'll talk about the two items on the left on the right, and then in the middle, I'll come to that last, that 1.69. You're looking at a map of the great state of Wisconsin. And I remember to this day driving on Burnett Road with my mother uh, leaving uh, St. Augustine's, and she said, there's a wonderful opportunity through the Archdiocese of the Bahamas, uh, the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas, to attend a summer camp in Wisconsin for the entire summer. Now keep in mind, this is an 11th grader you're talking to. Going off to Wisconsin, which at the time I had no clue where it was, what the makeup, the demographics were, that was outside of my plans. My plans were to stay in Nassau, to, to hang out and party with my friends until I hit the, uh, the 12th grade. Um, and that was, that was not her, uh, her desire for me. Um, if you don't know my mother, I will tell you very quickly, she's a very strong-willed person, so um, I was not gonna win that one. Um, and she saw to it that I was uh, packed up and on a plane for the entire summer I think it was in 91 or 92 uh, to Wisconsin. Um, I was not uh, thrilled about the decision, but I eventually got over it. And that was the best decision I could have made. And that led to, uh, to uh, several different insights. Number one, they, they didn't tell me that working in the summer camp meant working in the horse stables. So my very first experience with horses was also going to be on the job in a place I'd never been. Um, needless to say, my very first day I found myself standing between two horses that hated each other. And if you know anything about horses, when you get between two of them 
and the airs go down and the tail goes up. Look out, there's a kick coming. And sure enough, I was in the crossfire and got kicked in the uh, the knee. I was fine after that for a couple of hours. I recuperated, um, took uh, the, uh, the, the patrons on a, on a stable ride, which we commonly did. And, those, uh, and, and the horse I was on decided to take off into the pasture. Um, so like it, true Bahamian fashion, having never been on a horse, I jumped off. Uh, I, I wasn't going to allow him to uh, get the better part of me. That's, uh, that's, that's a side note of really saying that uh, the experience in Wisconsin, while it was unique and different, it taught me to never miss anything. That's really the bottom line. It's less about uh, what happened in, in that uh, Camp Web experience. Never miss anything. Never miss the relationships. Never miss the experience. Never miss, miss the exposure, even though it's different and unique. Never miss out. And that has served me well to this day. I enjoy great relationships with the people I met almost 30 years ago. We just had a Zoom call about two or three months ago. Um, and, and very privileged to, uh, to have had that experience. More importantly, very privileged to, uh, to have my mother stand, uh, stand firm and say, you're going to Wisconsin. The second uh, image is, that you see on screen is that of Mr. Harvey Coleman. Harvey is an Atlanta native. Um, actually, I'm sorry, he's a native of Detroit. He, um, he shared with me recently, he used to open for uh, the late Ray Charles. Uh, and I didn't know this until we recently uh, had lunch uh, pre-COVID. But Harvey um, became a mentor of mine. I asked him to be a mentor after um, uh, knowing him for about 10 years or so uh, just last year. And the reason why I did so, Harvey introduced me to a concept which I'll share with you called pie, performance, image, and exposure. And if you just vision for, envision for a second a pie chart with three slices, P being performance, I being image, E being exposure. And just by way of viewer participation, I'd love for any of you to tell me if that is in fact a pie chart, what is the percentage based on those letters, P, I, and E? Would you say P is 60? Would you say I is 40? Would uh, just anyone, if you put it in the chat or maybe call it out, what would you say, just for, just for a second, what, is, what would you think P, uh, P what, what percentage would you give to P? All right, Felix says 60 uh, for P. But Felix is actually quite the, uh, sorry about that, it's quite the opposite. Um, it's actually, uh, it's uh, 10%. And, and essentially 10% of performance because that's the expectation. When you show up as Rotarians, the expectation is for you to perform. When the start time is 7.05, the expectation is to start at 7.05. When, when you carry out your various functions uh, as, as Rotarians, that's the expectation. So you should max out the 10%. 30% is the image. It's your, your brand. Uh, it's how you, it's your reputation. It's how you market yourself. And of course it builds on the 10% of performance. So when people know that they can expect you to show up, it creates a reputation. Or as they say, it precedes itself. Your reputation precedes itself. 60%, as I was enlightened by Harvey, is exposure. Back to my point that I made earlier about uh, uh, never missing anything. Harvey taught me uh, just recent, or, or shared with me just recently, he taught himself to play 13 instruments. Not that he was wildly um, interested in instruments, although he was because of his musical background. He said it allowed him to get into conversations he would not otherwise get, in, get involved in. He taught himself to play golf and tennis. He started reading uh, literature, some of the historical figures in both the US military as well as uh, political figures, figures uh, worldwide, because then he could have a meaningful, meaningful conversation about other things with other people. And once that happened, that increased his overall capacity. He's gone on to run a very successful business, a consulting business in, uh, in the US. He did it primarily, this exposure, because at the time he was the number one, before he, he landed on this concept, he was the number one sales rep in, uh, for Xerox as an African-American and the only African-American, but could not break through the glass ceiling. Could not at all. And he thought his performance, he was thinking it was great, it should be greater than 10%. He thought it was all about performance when in fact it was about exposure. So once he became in more enlightened and more worldly and more, more traveled, that's when he realized that some of those doors started to, uh, to open for him. Lastly, uh, in, in terms of the moments that matter, and I used to be embarrassed by this, but I can tell you I'm no longer embarrassed, although I will tell you, I, I will say I, I'm disappointed that this happened. This was my GPA, 1.69, in my junior year at Hampton. Fortunately, not my cumulative GPA. So I was able to graduate with some respect. Um, but my GPA dropped to 1.69. Why? Because I thought I'd figured it out. 
I thought I knew everything. Didn't need to go to French class. I'd never spoken French and spoken Fr Spanish and taken Spanish classes, but I didn't need to go to French class any longer. I'd stopped going to my communications classes. I stopped going to math classes. Little did I know that had a, an effect. It created an outcome. And in my case, it was 1.69. And I must say, for the lengthy conversations I've had with my mother over the years, you can only imagine what type of conversation that was. But surprisingly, it was the shortest conversation she and I have ever had. And it was a quick call. She said, Lars, I got your transcript. It's 1.69. Let me share something with you. I have tuition for one more year. After that, that is it. The door is closed and you are on your own. That day was the single biggest change or single uh, biggest moment in my life. Of the three moments that matter, that was the biggest one. Every day in that following semester, and by the way, that last, that last year, my senior year, I did 39 credits. 20 my, my first semester, 18 my second. In your senior year, that's almost unheard of. That's usually the, the year when you scale down on your, uh, your classes. But I never missed anything as a result. I tightened up my time management. I increased my discipline. I didn't realize what I was really doing was preparing myself for the rest of my career. On Saturday mornings, uh, in the midst of a senior year of college when most senior uh, uh, college students would sleep in, I was up early at 7 a.m. studying. After every class, I would go to the library. Every evening, I found myself uh, from the library. Barrett, I don't know if you remember, but sometimes you picked me up from that, uh, that very library in that, uh, that senior year. So needless to say, that disappointing and embarrassing experience that I faced I didn't realize at the time that would be the setup for me uh, for many more, uh, many more years to come. Let's see here, uh, sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, lessons from, uh, from COVID-19, I'll start off in the, uh, the middle. The image that you see in the middle is called the Kinefin framework. It's uh, designed by a gentleman by the name of, uh, of uh, David Snowden. Uh, if you know anything about Agile um, and, and ways of working, uh, this is a model that is used uh, quite a bit, but I'll sum up the model and say this, from right to left is predictable to unpredictable. And one of the things I was trying to do in the midst of COVID-19 in a business that was deeply challenged like so many other businesses in our society at large, I was trying to predict the unpredictable. If you look at the far right corner, the knowable and the co yet the complicated, we always try to, to take on new situations or face new situations based on a frame of reference. And you look at the bottom right-hand corner of the, uh, of the image, that's very much it. The top, top right-hand corner is uh, uh, good practices, bottom right-hand corner, best practices. There were no best practices for COVID-19. I think we're in a better situation now because we've seen the plight as well as we've seen uh, some, some outcomes and, and how to remain safe and, and healthy. Um, but at the same time, we were trying to apply predictable uh, methods or a predictable concept with an unpredictable uh, uh, world. And I say that to my team all the time. If you're faced with something that seems to be unpredictable, do not look for a frame of reference. Get creative, be intelligent, be foundational, be fundamental as to how you approach it. The image off to the left, this is a summary of empathy. In running a business like ours, where we had to make uh, job cuts, where we had to downsize um, some really good colleagues of ours, we had to reduce our spending, where we had to uh, uh, voluntarily separate um, uh, some individuals and, and have early retirement packages, uh, reduce bonus percentages, the list goes on and on, freeze our pension. The one thing I lacked in that moment was the empathy for what it meant to the individuals that uh, had to experience some of that, or, or need, needless to say, the individuals that were burdened by it. And it was a very stark reminder for me, in everything we do, there is always someone on the receiving end. Whether you're in a business that's, that's involved in manufacturing, where you're in a business that's hard and fast and looks like widgets, there is always a person on the receiving end. And empathy will always uh, lead us, lead us uh, through. The last image off to the right, always speak the truth. Now, someone like me that has a very spiritual uh, base, uh, I'm very God-fearing, I will tell you that there are times where you want to speak the truth, but because of the timing, because of what it entails, you can't say everything. I've actually started to uh, do away with that. In the, in the most chaotic and most dire of moments, speaking the truth is almost the only thing you need, only thing you have to rely on. And being open and honest with people, and sometimes telling them, I don't know but I'll get an answer for you. Sometimes telling them, 
to be honest with you, uh, I can't share everything, but I will tell you this is as best you can do, go with that. And that's been, uh, that's been one of the, uh, the single uh, uh, moments for me in uh, 2019, I'm sorry, 2020, especially as we froze our pension. Uh, and for anyone that's ever gone through a pension freeze, um, it is a very, very tough message uh, to, uh, to get across because most individuals in a pension are, are long tenured uh, and they've, they've, uh, they've done right by the organization and certainly uh, helped to build the organization. And, and we were not very good in, in how we articulated uh, the, the level of impact. So those are the three lessons, as well as uh, three matters that, uh, three moments that uh, mattered, as well as uh, the three principles that I, I live by. Uh, in the end, before I uh, uh, open it up for questions and turn it back over to, uh, to the host, I just want to say that my time in the U.S., uh, has drawn me a lot closer to my days and time in the Bahamas. And Bart and I had a conversation back in uh, December where the thing that I think is, is incumbent upon me and that I am burdened by, that was a term he used, is to build a bridge back to the Bahamas. I remember seven years ago, the, the topic of brain drain came up. And I remember um, being cynical when I heard the term, but I couldn't really articulate what I wanted to say. And as time has gone on, what I felt was, it is not a brain drain when a Bahamian leaves, but rather it's a brain advantage. It's an advantage when a Bahamian, either back in the Bahamas or abroad, can connect with each other, build bridges to help each other thrive. And that's really the, uh, the burden and the responsibility that I feel that I have. That's why I, I so gladly uh, took Barrett up on the, uh, the invitation. It isn't just to tell you about my background. That's a part of it, certainly. But it's to build these bridges. Because I think I, I have some, some opportunities to gain by reconnecting uh, to my fellow Bahamians and then vice versa. And I would like, I would impress upon all of us, all of us to think about, to think about those individuals that are abroad. How can they create an advantage uh, for Bahamians and vice versa for themselves? And with that, folks, I want to say thank you very much for your time this morning. I wish all of you very well. I think you're doing um, uh, God's work. When I read the, uh, the history of uh, the Rotary, and some of the work that you're doing there in uh, Nassau, uh, representing Nassau Sunrise, I would say it's uh, certainly, uh, certainly God's work and Yeoman's work. So thank you very much. Thank you too, Laz, for your excellent presentation this morning. Questions, the floor is now open for questions. <laughs> yes, good morning. I have a comment and a question for, for Laz. Yes, good morning, Felix. Thank you so much for a wonderful presentation. It's very, very enlightening for me. Uh, my question is, uh, have you ever considered becoming a Rotarian? You know, the, the opportunity was offered to me about a year ago. We actually have a chapter here in Sandy Springs. Uh, in fact, my general counsel uh, offered it to me because of my civic involvement today. I said, maybe next year. I, I have a number of uh, things uh, that, I'm on, that are on my plate at the moment. My uh, Society of HR Management is going through a major transformation. So as the chair, we're hiring a new CEO, et cetera. So not to bore you with the details, but I'd love to, I'd love to consider it at a, at a later point, maybe in 2022. Okay, I, I will get your contacts from Barrett and have someone in Atlanta keep contact, con contact with you just in case you try to forget. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions? Uh, just, a, just a comment. You mentioned the importance of service in your whole career and personal development. But sure. for those of us who are a little older would know of your mom. And yeah, I'm, we are praising her, yes. But she was one of the persons who was in the forefront of the care for AIDS patients at a time when it was really, Francis, you know what I'm talking about. When it was time, when it, a time when that was considered a scourge. It was considered a uh, retribution by God for the, these people who didn't know how to behave. Your mother, I, you, 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 of course, you were living with her, so you would know the sacrifices she made. I would just like to uh, hail her at this point and to say how grateful we are as a community for her and how you could echo her service to the community and to see how as a result of her service, you are where you are now. And I thank you for keeping connection with the Bahamas and continue to be a great shining light. And you have 
pretty much a good Bahamian accent. You ain't lose all your accent. I'm particularly pleased about that. We are proud of you. And God bless you and continue to shine and be a good example to all of us, to black people in particular. And you're in Georgia. I don't know who I should find for that, but I should really uh, get somebody to pay a little extra because Georgia came through. <laughs> but that's right, another blue. Do, do well, blue. Do well. <laughs> God bless you, all right? Thank you and very much. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a giant. And so all the giants in the chat, please put in $2 because this young man, you didn't go to St. John's, but you were smart enough to get a good giant for a wife. Tell her hello for us. <laughs> Jimmy, hail to the giants. But quick question, Jimmy. Hail to Was, the giants. Uh, Lass's mother involved with the AIDS camp? Uh, she could answer that, but she was always, yeah, mo, mo, I'm sure. That, mo, no. she, Hello. She was like that. Go ahead. Um, I'm a social worker, but had very little interaction with AIDS patients. I worked mainly with children. Most of my years were spent with offenders in Her Majesty's prisons, and I was once the administrator of the Simpson Penn Center for Boys. Okay. So really with rehabilitation and corrections. Um, Congratulations. The reason I ask because yeah. some time ago I chaired the All Saints AIDS camp that Glenn Wright Nottage used to run. No, I only visited the camp if I had clients there, but, but no um, great interaction with AIDS patients. Well, thank you for your service and thank you for developing this wonderful son that you have. Thank you. Thank you, PDG. Are there any further questions for Mr. Mims? Yes, President Francis, this is Simone. And I have a two-part question. How are you able to rebound from an HR and leadership perspective from the lessons you learned in COVID and having to have those difficult conversations with staff of those things that you had mentioned. And the second part of the question is what advice would you give to leaders in navigating their teams through changing times? It's a, it's a, good, it's a good question. Um, you know, the, the first thing, I, I, I deliberately place the principles um, up front because I, I often uh, uh, revisit those. Uh, in fact, on a daily basis, I have what's called a 5 a.m. club. Uh, so this morning at 5 a.m., um, I. I Every morning at 5 a.m., I, I usually uh, do a little journaling, uh, 20, uh, tw and then 20 minutes uh, meditating or praying. And, and part of that is really to stabilize myself. But more importantly, very simply, is to be still. In my stillness is when I, I get a chance to, uh, to, to firmly plant myself in some of the challenges that I face. And the reason why I mention empathy is that's usually what it starts with. That's, that's usually where it starts for me. Yes, we have a business to run. At the same time, that business either goes or doesn't go based on the people that work for us. And so I try my best to put myself in their shoes and I can't. I mean, we had a, a super spreader of an event of, of a COVID outbreak um, in December in, in Baltimore uh, where 12 people were infected. I, I won't ever experience that, but I can think about the individuals and the uncertainty that they face. I can think about their families and the uncertainty that those families have. I can go to the, to, uh, to the the, the virtual environment or physical environment that they experience and say, boy, what, what should I be telling them? And that, is, that has helped to uh, harness a lot of the, uh, the messages that, that I've, I've had to deliver. I'll tell you, when you do it with honesty and sincerity, people actually, as difficult as it is, people will tell you and will, will apologize that you are the one that has to deliver some of those messages. And just doing that, I know that probably simplifies it, uh, overly simplify, simplifies it, but just doing that creates an example for the people that, uh, that you lead. Because that's what they're looking for. People are looking for something that they can emulate and they can, uh, they can uh, execute in, in terms of uh, business terms. So for me, it's stillness. It's being empathetic. And then lastly, it's, it's really asking, what, what's the right thing to do here? What, what, is the, what is the right thing for us to do? And that's not often easy because that comes in the face of, um, of a very unpopular uh, decision. Sometimes you're the only voice in the wilderness um, uh, to, uh, to cry out and say, I don't think this is the right thing to do, but you do have to go back to your virtues and, and some of those principles. That has to be the starting point, and that's why it starts out every morning for me. 
Wonderful. Are there Thank any you. other questions? <clears throat> now we'll invite Rotarian Barrett to bring the vote of thanks. Good morning, Lars. Let me first say how proud we are of your accomplishments, man. You have really excelled and we, I'm sure I'm speaking on behalf of not only myself, but the entire club and even our country. We are proud of what you have done in your field and just encourage you to continue. So on behalf of the Rotary Club of Nassau Sunrise, we'd like to say thank you for an informative and inspiring share of your career journey. Your diligence and commitment to excellence is commendable, despite your short relationship with mediocrity. And if my memory serves me right, um, we were hanging out right before and then after that 1.69 um, experience at HU, so I plead a fifth and um, <laughs> you, no, get a you, you are not directly involved in my, in my demise. <laughs> 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 when you get a chance, you're gonna have to bring me up to speed. Um, but yeah, don't be don't be in my old lady's bad books now. You know that, that's a good answer. <laughs> Listen, that's why I'm trying to create some distance. Um, <laughs> but um, from my seat, Lars, um, I'm not entirely surprised of your accomplishments because I saw where you were putting those building blocks in place um, even then. So, and also when I look back now, I can see how um, you know you was really strategic and intentional in building a career. I remember many conversations we had when you were at Home Depot and I was at Target and just a development focus. So not surprising, but definitely um, just really proud of what you have you. been accomplished. Um, so I, I encourage you to continue building the bridges back, man. Um, and Felix beat me to it as well. I wanna encourage you, I wanna invite you to become a Rotarian. So we will definitely continue conversations along those lines. So um, Thank you. thanks again, Lars, and continue um, doing well. Continue leading the way in your field, um, both in the US and also continue to make strides here as you continue partnering with Bohemians back home. Thank Bart, you. thank you for Bart, thank you very much. Again, really appreciate the opportunity. I want to say thank you to uh, to the entire uh, Rotary Club. Uh, this has certainly been a uh, pleasure of mine and an honor to uh, to spend time with you this morning. And and Bart, as we as we talked about in December, let's let's make good on our promise to uh, to reconnect these bridges. Absolutely. Great, great. Secretary Donet, the raffle. <clears throat> Thank you, President. Um, happy to bring the raffle. Um, let me share a new screen. Sorry. Please attend to me. Oh, wow. I was trying to get everything in so I don't have to do this. All right. Give me one okay. second then. Um, All right, so for future meetings, we will be um, doing the raffle, closing off a little early so we don't have to wait. All right. Okay. All right, let me see. All right, that just happened in the background. Let me share my screen again. Okay, so the winner is Simone Bo. Mm. Congratulations, Yay. Simone. Congratulations, Simone. <laughs> now we'll have the four way <coughs> test by A.G. Carla. She just reached Chicago in already. <laughs> the four way test. Good morning, President Francis, fellow Rotarians, and friends. Of the, things we think, of the things we think, say, or do, is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? 
Is it's it fair to all countries? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, AG. Final toast direct to Leon. <laughs> Director Leon. Director Leon, you're muted. Director Leon, you're muted. Don't tell me my technology guy. I can't understand his own technology. Senator Romney tried to exit the chain. Leon? Leon. Oh, wow. Okay, I know Crystal is going to give you a hard time later. Leon? Oh. He probably lost a connection. Yes. All right. The final so someone else present. Did he get it? No, you can ask someone else. You know, give us the final toast, please. To Rotary Around the World. Rotary Around the World. Around the World. Around the world. Rotary Around the World. The disruption in the election. You know, if I knew you were going to get that job, I would have taken that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> to our visiting Rotarians and guests, thank you for your participation this morning. And I wish all of you online a blessed day. Stay safe. Bless everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Later. Bye, everyone. Thanks, have thanks. a wonderful day. One thing you can control, one thing you do have a say in.